What is going on guys, Ben Glugan here coming back at you with another video today. Of course, as you can tell, I'm in my new apartment finally. And I also, I want to apologize before we get into things. I know Dolphins franchise has been a little bit lackluster lately as I've had a ton of uh, technical difficulties while recording. I did everything for my laptop, but the life of my laptop unfortunately came to a uh, screeching halt lately as every single video I would record it would completely desync the audio from my face cam, the game audio from the actual game, my face cam and face cam audio from the actual gameplay. So nothing was in sync with anything. It was completely terrible. And I do apologize. That led to me streaming some of them on Twitch. It is what it is. We're back now. I have a PC, of course, in my new apartment. I've got lighting. We're good to go. Um, and maybe I'll give you guys a tour and like a rebuild or something very quickly. Because I know a lot of you guys were asking about that. But today, I don't even have a title for this video, right? But Eagles TD mod on the channel. If you guys don't know, um, I stream on Twitch quite frequently. Definitely make sure to check that out. Twitch.tv slash Bengals. So I'm out of there. Gave me this idea. He DM me on Twitter. Link also in the description. A lot of plugs so far, but just follow him. We don't, I won't have to. Um, and if you don't have Twitter, it's the best app. Like, like, step up to the plate. Like, come on, let's go. Anyway, he DM me with the idea of like, what if every team in the NFL could bring back one player that was formerly on the team to help them right now? And I'm like, you know what? That is a very, very interesting idea. It's a provocative idea. So I tweeted out about it, asking a bunch of different, uh, I guess, asking all the followers to, to weigh in. And like 400 plus people responded. Uh, I didn't really look at many of them. However, due to my... Uh, uh, or I, With my best ability, I should say, we have tried to match... You know, some of the best players on these teams all time. And then also of an era um, to some of these teams. So, is Lawrence Taylor the best player in New York Giants history? Absolutely he is. Without question. However, that doesn't mean it's just the best player from every team all time. Try to mix it up and, you know, add in some fun ones here and there. Uh, so, we'll go over all of them. They all have Superstar X Factor. We're going to simulate a season and see what the records look like. See how these uh, these teams look and how they perform. And let's go ahead and, and show you guys some of these new players or old players on these new teams, if that makes sense. So also, something to note, right? So Eagles did make this roster for me. Thank you very much, the Eagles. However, some of the stats are not accurate. So he input all these different attributes for the player. So Walter Payton is a 90 overall. However, when creating all these players, uh, did not change the numbers, did not change the face, did not change the college. It is what it is. It's not going to be important for the simulation stats. The height and the weight is correct. And that's really all that matters. So this is Walter Payton. Everyone has superstar X-Factor development. His ratings are as follows. Everyone is very, very strong. He, again, I know that looks nothing like Walter Payton. Not the number he wore. Sweetness, that's fine. Just worry about the uh, the attributes and all that and the, and the overall in general. I'm not going to show you guys the attributes for everyone. But for Walter Payton, he is on the Bears. Of course, you look at quarterback. And you're like, okay, you could take a prime Jay Cutler. You could take Jim McMahon. You could take uh, Sid Luckman, even, for the Bears. Like, there are a number of different quarterback options. But we're going to stick it out with Trubisky for a while. They have one of the best running backs in NFL history. And he's a, a significant upgrade over Tariq Cohen here and, and David Montgomery and even Mike Davis, of course. So they're going to stick it out with Money Mitch Trubisky for a little while longer, even though he is uh, certainly not the best option. For the Bengals, went with Anthony Munoz, Hall of Fame left tackle. Eagles made him a right tackle for whatever reason. Um, he's not. I know that Bobby Hart. Um, I guess Anthony Munoz is going to play right tackle. Doesn't really matter too much. It's still protecting the, uh, the, uh, you know, the offensive line. Not the blind side, obviously. But uh, Anthony Munoz, Hall of Fame left tackle. Eagles put him on the right side. Willie Anderson is the Hall of Fame. I believe he's Hall of Fame right tackle for the Bengals. Uh, at the Bills, we got Orenthal James Simpson. We got the juice is loose. OJ Simpson back. Number of good running backs to choose from on this team. Could have went with um, Thurman Thomas. Could have gone with a prime Fred Jackson. Um, Marshawn Lynch would be a weirder one as he wasn't that good with the Bills. But, I mean, CJ Spiller even would be kind of a cool one. But, of course, got to go with one of the best running backs in all of fame, uh, in Bills history, in NFL history, of course, obviously. I think he was a killer choice. And um, when he gets his football, he's going to get away with it and just, you know, go all the way down the field, score some touchdowns for this Bills team. Definitely an upgrade over their current running backs as they only have Frank Gore, who is 36, almost as old as OJ in real life, probably to yell in Devin Singletary, a.k.a. the new LaShawn McCoy. So we got OJ for the Bills. For the Broncos, it had to be John Elway. Like, it's a significant upgrade over Joe Flacco. 
Drew Locke isn't going to play right away. We're only going to simulate a season. So Elway was the easy move. Of course, the Stanford quarterback also played a little bit of baseball. I think he was a Yankees draft pick in the second round of uh, whatever draft that happened. He was, of course, a quarterback taken in the 1983 draft by, um, er, ooh, 83? Was he the number one pick? I believe so. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I think it was the 83 class with all the Hall of Famers in it. But John Elway had to be the pick. Some people also wanted Champ Bailey, one of my favorite players in NFL history. And when you look at cornerback, of course, they have Chris Harris and then not a whole lot else. Bryce Callahan's a slot cornerback, and they don't, again, they don't really have much else, but it had to be John Elway. He's just such a significant upgrade over Joe Flacco or Drew Locke that it ran it out. It just absolutely had to be done. Uh, for the Browns, went with Joe Thomas, one of the best left tackles uh, in NFL history. Absolutely had to be the player here. So Joe Thomas goes to the Browns, solidifies that offensive line, as he did for many years. For the Bucks, it went with Rondé Barber, one of the best players in their history, too. Of course, uh, they're one of the younger teams in the NFL, one of the newest, what, five or six teams? So definitely a good option. Rondé Barber is a beast, was a beast, played cornerback, played free safety for a little while near the end of his career. We're still good. For the Cardinals, we went with Anquan Bolden. What a great combination with Larry Fitzgerald he was. Uh, when they were both in their prime with the Cardinals. You know, could have gone with a number of different Cardinals too. Like David Boston had a sick prime. He could have gotten a really good overall. Because um, that's what these are. It's, it's the prime of these players for the most part. Junior Seau had to be the call for the Cardinals. The Cardinals, could be for the Chargers. People wanted LaDainian Tomlinson, but they have Melvin Gordon in this. I know he's not playing in real life, but he's still on the roster. So Melvin Gordon had to be the pick. Others wanted a cornerback, maybe a Quentin Jammer, former Texas Longhorn, or an Antonio Cromartie, but like... Casey Hayward, Desmond King in the slot, Trevor Williams. Like, it's a good CB group. I don't really think that adding another cornerback makes a whole lot of sense. Had to be Junior Seau. Their linebacking core is really weak. Junior Seau was such a good player uh, in his prime, rest in peace. But uh, he absolutely had to be the pick. I'm surprised no one said his name, but I had to go with Junior Seau all day. For the Chiefs, Derek Thomas was the easy choice. Um, one of the best edge rushers, another rest in peace. Unfortunately, he passed away in a car crash, I believe, on an icy road many years ago now, like 20 years ago. But Derek Thomas was an unbelievable player, one of the best edge rushers the NFL's ever seen. Uh, it's a tragedy that his life and uh, career was cut short. I think he was like only 31 or so when he passed away, something in that range. If I, I could be mistaken, but um, he had to be the move there for the Colts. Had to bring back the Sheriff, Peyton Manning. They no longer have Andrew Luck. <laughs> I don't think it's that fun to bring back Andrew Luck. Like with the Steelers, like Antonio Brown makes a lot of sense for that team, but we're not going to bring back Antonio Brown to the Steelers right now, especially in lieu of everything that's going on with him on the, uh, or I guess not even on the Patriots anymore. He got cut. But Peyton Manning was the easy call for um, the Colts, and the easy upgrade over Jacoby Brissett. For the Cowboys, brought back the cocaine cowboy, Michael Irvin, the playmaker. Adds to that receiving core, makes it absolutely dominant. Michael Irvin, Amari Cooper, and Randall Cobb. Michael Gallup in there as well. You could have gone with a number of different positions, like Larry Allen um, would have been a really good guy to choose. Like There were a number of guys you could have gone with, like Deion Sanders would have been a cool one as well, but I decided to go Michael Irvin. Even like Roy Williams at strong safety. Um, Oklahoma guy, I don't love that, but would have been a cool one for the Dolphins. It had to be Dan Marino. Like, it had to be Dan Marino. That's all I can really say about that. The team is so bad, but maybe a 99 overall quarterback can make them a competitor. So the records are going to be super interesting at the end of this. For the Eagles, decided to go with Asante Samuel. This is one that was thrown out a lot for the Eagles. Also, of course, Weapon X was thrown out a lot, Brian Dawkins. But they have Malcolm Jenkins at strong safety and a free safety. Andrew Sandejo and Rodney McLeod are both high enough overalls that didn't really need to go with him. But at cornerback, they're pretty weak in general. Ronald Darby is not that great. Avante Maddox is not that great. They're decent overalls in game. Um, but it's not a great CB group. So I think Asante Samuel, prime Asante Samuel, brings a lot to the table there. Uh, for the Falcons, that's why I didn't do uh, Dion on the Cowboys. Because we did Dion on the Falcons. And I think they could use some CB upgrades. Of course, Desmond Trufant's a good player. But outside of that, they don't really have much. Isaiah Oliver, Kendall Sheffield, who's a rookie. Um, you know, Bleedy Red Wilson in there. Like, it's not great. So Deion Sanders is certainly the uh, the guy that we're going with for the Falcons. For the 49ers, Steve Young, Joe Montana would definitely have been good options, but they got Jimmy G, so they're good enough for now. We decided to bring back uh, one of the best players in NFL history in Jerry Rice, arguably the best player. Right up there with, uh, with Tom Brady, of course. For the Giants, of course, you guys saw Lawrence Taylor. Um, now, they all have superstar X-Factor development, but I didn't change any of the abilities so 
whatever they got, they got. So that's what they have. I mean, they're all really, really strong already. For the Jaguars, went with Jimmy Smith, one of the most underrated players in NFL history from 1994. 95, 96, 97, one of those to 2005. Jimmy Smith had like 12,000 yards. I looked it up like last night or two nights ago on stream. We were talking about underrated players. I brought up Jimmy Smith. He was just unbelievable. And he did a lot of his damage into his 30s, from like 30 to 36. Jimmy Smith was unbelievable. Now with the Jaguars, could have gone with Tony Baselli and shared up the offensive line. But I think Jimmy Smith is a player that uh, not enough people are talking about. Also could have gone with a running back. It's not like Leonard Fournette has been anything special so far, but... Fred Taylor would have been awesome. Maurice Jones-Drew, of course. But I think Jimmy Smith um, is definitely a huge upgrade to that receiving core, as you can see, based on some of the overalls in there now. For the Jets, went with Darrell Revis. Prime Darrell Revis. They need cornerbacks so bad. And can you imagine if they brought back Darrell Revis? Definitely would be a quite the upgrade for them. For the Lions, brought back Barry Sanders. Now, Carrion Johnson's a good back, don't get me wrong, but Barry Sanders is arguably the best back in NFL history. For the Packers, uh, went with Sterling Sharp. Now, their receiving core isn't anything crazy outside of Devontae Adams, in my opinion. MVS and Marquez Valdez-Scantling, Geronimo Allison, Jake Kumro, Equinemia St. Brown. Like, it's not a great receiving core. One of the best route runners in NFL history in Sterling Sharp, and I really do mean that. I don't know where that, like, Sharp accent came from, but with Sterling Sharp, one of the best route runners in NFL history, bar none. Another career that was just cut short due to injuries. I believe concussions got the best of him, unfortunately. For the Panthers... Went with Julius Peppers. This team needs edge help. They drafted Brian Burns for a reason. But what about the other side? Julius Peppers definitely uh, is a very, very good player to add to that that pass rush for sure. Really, really good player. And we have two UNC pass rushers on this team. Lawrence Taylor, or in the, not on the team, in this uh, kind of like past to present sort of thing with Julius Peppers. And of course, Lawrence Taylor, the real LT. For the Patriots, Randy Moss. One of the best uh, players in NFL history again. One of the best receivers, arguably the most talented receiver in NFL history. Uh, say what you will about Jerry Rice, but didn't have the size or athleticism as Randy Moss, who could also run routes with the best of them. But Jerry Rice, you know, he's the best receiver in NFL history, you have to say, based on his numbers. But Randy Moss, what a special player he was, and a great combo to reunite with Tom Brady, but this time in 2019, and this time he's 20. They're all like 20 or 21. For the Raiders, went with Nandi Asamoah. Again, like... Could have gone with a number of different options here, especially a cornerback like like Lester Hayes, um, Mike Haynes, a cornerback, Bully Brown. But um, and even at safety, you could have brought in like Jack Tatum or something would be really cool. But Namdi Asawa for like three years was the best cornerback in the NFL. He was unbelievable. So I figured that this would be a fun throwback to bring him back. One of my favorite players in the NFL at the time. Um, kind of forgot about him as he went to like to the Eagles and like kind of was really, really bad. Uh, and of course, I hate the Eagles, but Nambi Asamoah was so good. More people should know about him if they don't. With the Rams, went with Merlin Olsen. Now, Deacon Jones would have been a good one, of course, but I really don't feel comfortable playing him like a 3-4. I just don't think of him as that type of player. So I went with a defensive tackle uh, instead. And Merlin Olsen is the only defensive player in NFL history to be a pro bowler or all pro. I believe it is. Four, or I think it's pro bowler. 14 times. Pretty unbelievable. So definitely a really, really good player. And they need a defensive tackle really badly. Of course, they play a 3-4. Aaron Donald is a defensive end. Michael Brockers is the other defensive end. Merlin Olsen is quite the addition. And they've got a phenomenal, phenomenal defensive line there, as if they didn't already. Aaron Donald's his own defensive line. Ray Lewis was the easy choice for the Ravens. They have Patrick Owasso, who's okay. Kenny Young, who's okay. But they don't really have much up the middle at linebacker. Ed Reed would have been a cool one. Could have gone with a number of different guys, but it had to be Ray Lewis. Another killer addition to this team. Um... I could make something about a bloody suit joke, but I'm just going to, I don't have one. So uh, apologies for that. Apologies for this controller disconnection all the time as well. For the Redskins, I thought about wide receiver, man, Art Monk. Um, maybe a Santana Moss would have been really cool. And their receiving core is not good. But I thought it would have been really fun to bring back Sean Taylor. Another unfortunate, you know, early passing. Rest in peace. I feel like that's a trend, unfortunately, in this video. Um, but... Sean Taylor, unbelievable player. Great addition to this team for sure. For the Saints, went with Ricky Jackson. I think they need edge help more than anything right now. 
aside from Cam Jordan, they don't have much. I know they drafted Marcus Davenport, but Ricky Jackson is a great addition to this team. Right now at right end, they're starting Trey Hendricks, I believe, Hendrickson. So Ricky Jackson definitely is a uh, worthwhile pickup for this team by a lot. Really underrated player again in the NFL. For the Seahawks, went with Steve Largent, one of the best receivers in NFL history. Really, really slept on, as a lot of you guys like to say, but Steve Largent was an absolute beast. And um, had the most receiving yards in NFL history, I believe, up or catch reception, something like that. I think it was receiving yards prior to Jerry Rice breaking his record. For the Steelers, went with Jack Lambert, one of the best linebackers in NFL history. Easily, Jack Ham is another great one on the Steel Curtain. Another Jack, another linebacker, but went with Jack Lambert. It would have made sense to bring back Antonio Brown with his receiving core. Um, but I think Jack Lambert is a really, really fun addition to this team. Mean Joe Green, of course. Could have been another fun one, but I wasn't just trying to take the best player of all time uh, on each team. I was just trying to yeah, make it a little bit fun and add a, a bunch of different players that would make this uh, definitely enjoyable. For the Texans, brought back Mario Williams. This is basically your Didevion Clowney replacement. Mario Williams was really, really good. At number one overall pick by the Texans in 2006. 2006, I want to say. I want to say. I think it was 2006. Uh, and then for the Titans, went with Warren Moon, of course, uh, was a great Oilers QB, but it's the same team, so it counts. Steve McNair was another option if I wanted to go quarterback. Maybe it would have been a little bit more fun, but uh, Warren Moon had to have been the pick. Rest in peace, Steve McNair, by the way. And the last team was the Vikings, went with Steve Hutchinson. Like, it's not the most glamorous, but some of these teams needed an offensive lineman. And uh, as you can see with Josh Klein here, Drew Samia. Um, and at left guard, Pat Elfline, like, they needed some offensive line help pretty bad, and one of the best guards of the 2000s definitely had to be the choice, so, um, Steve Hutchinson, really great player. Those are the players on the teams, let me know, like, who I missed out, and of course, there's so many interchangeable guys, because this is looking throughout the team's entire history, and you got to take, like, short primes for some players, like Namdi Asamoah, and then, like, other all-time greats like Lawrence Taylor for the Giants. So let's go ahead and simulate to the end of the season. We'll check out the stats of some of these players and see how the scope of the NFL has changed. Are the Dolphins going to be competitive in the AFC East? Maybe. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen here. Should be a whole lot of fun. All right. So even with Lawrence Taylor, the Giants don't make the playoffs. A little bit unfortunate. It went six and ten. The Redskins were still brutal. I guess the addition of Sean Taylor really didn't do a whole lot for that team. Um, let's check it by division. For the AFC North, the Ravens won the division, Browns at 8-8, eight and eight. Steelers, then Bengals. So, interesting, the Ravens are dominating with Ray Lewis. For the AFC South, Texans won the division, then the Titans, Colts, Jaguars. For the AFC East, I really wanted to see what the Dolphins were going to do with Dan Marino, but they went 3-13 and 13 still. I guess having a 99 overall quarterback doesn't exactly change much, but the Bills with OJ were fantastic. Patriots still won the division. AFC West, the Chargers went 9-6, and six, won the division. Chiefs at 9-7, and seven. Broncos, Raiders, both with five wins, one tie in there. For the NFC North, the Bears went 14-2 and two and crushed it with Walter Payton. Packers and the Lions, Vikings, per usual, really, really bad. And I guess an offensive lineman doesn't really add much to that team. For the NFC South, Panthers went 11-5, and five, won the division, beat the Saints and Falcons, who both had 10 wins. Buccaneers went 4-12. and 12. The NFC East... Eagles, Cowboys, Giants, Redskins, and finishing up with the NFC West, the Rams won the division. Then we have the 49ers, Cardinals, and Seahawks both went 5-10-1. Brutal. Let's go ahead and check out the stats and see how some of these players perform. It's going to be interesting. Um, so let's just check out the entire NFL and see like where some of these players rank. I'm not going to go team by team. I don't know. I made a weird noise there. Uh, Warren Moon led the NFL in passing yards. I mean, they are like 99 overall quarterbacks. That it does make a little bit of sense. Peyton Manning was at number two. Um, that's pretty cool. Let's just go ahead and unplug that. Um, Andrew Luck came back with the Bills. So that's always annoying. There's not really much to do until like, I don't is EA going to take him out? I don't know. He keeps signing with teams and, and winning games for them. It's very frustrating. Um, who else was in here? Any other quarterbacks? John Elway? Um, had a decent season. I mean, those are good numbers, just not what you expect of a 99 overall quarterback. This really shows you how scheme plays out in these uh, simulations. Because where in the world is Dan Marino? Oh my goodness. Not a great year for Dan Marino. Not a great year. I forgot to turn injuries off, so it's possible that he got injured. Can I see the amount of games that he played? 
Didn't exactly have a lot of yards per game, though. So that's kind of weak. For rushing, Walter Payton led the league in rushing yards, 1958 and 26 touchdowns. Oh, my God. Walter Payton dominated. Oh, my goodness. Where is OJ? The juice is loose. Barry Sanders averaged 6.1 yards per carry, but they only gave him 160 attempts. This really should show you about scheme, man. It's way too strong. It's not about individual ability at all. Where in the world is Orenthal James? Averaged 6 yards per carry, only got 121 touches. Jesus. That is so bad. Receiving. Adam Humphreys, what the hell? Had 107 catches for 1,547 yards and 12 TDs. Warren Moon is OP. We had a lot of receivers in here. Randy Moss had a good year. 14 touchdowns, obviously, is definitely nothing to sneeze at. Um, who else was in here? We had Jimmy Smith. Jerry Rice, of course, had an okay year. Yikes. Wasn't over 1,000 yards. Didn't have 10 touchdowns. Michael Irvin in there was beat out by Deshaun Hamilton. Two more touchdowns for Deshaun. There's Sterling Sharp. Jimmy Smith in here. I think it's mainly the uh, Steve Largent I forgot about. Yo, I, I keep talking about these schemes, but like, come on, dude. Look at some of these. Like, who's passing who? Deshaun Hamilton was above Jimmy Smith in, it was in 99. Like, Julio Jones even. Whatever. For blocking... I don't really know how they sort this. I think it's completely random. Um, who let up the most sacks? Can I sort by this? I don't want to do Jason Kelsey. Donovan Smith did not have his best game. And maybe if Anthony Munoz was a left tackle instead of being made a right tackle, um, he doesn't give up 20 sacks for the for the Bengals on that left side, on that blind side, for the red rifle Andy Dalton. Defensively, this is where a lot of things come in. Um, Junior Seau. 123 tackles had a really really good he had a really good year nine for loss six and a half sacks two picks um where is ray lewis that's what i want to know namdi asimwa had a ton of tackles only two picks for him where is ray lewis there's late uh, lawrence taylor 21 and a half sacks we'll get to that in a minute ronde barber had a ton of tackles five picks for him too but we'll get to that a little bit later i want to there's jack lambert 97 tackles. Am I missing? There's Monte Nichols. I didn't see. Where's, uh, why am I seeing Monte Nichols and not Sean Taylor? Where is Ray Lewis? Dude, I don't even see him. Oh, there he is. 84 tackles. I mean, he had a, he had a good year, but nothing crazy. Tackles for loss. I want to see Merlin Olsen up here. Yeah, there he is. 18 tackles for loss. 14 and a half sacks. Look at this, this defensive line. With Aaron Donald and Merlin Olsen, the fearsome force and returning. 40, or excuse me, 38. Um, 38. Why Why does it not look like 38? It, it, it is. I don't know why I'm second guessing myself. I'm not a math guy, as you guys know, but it is 38 tackles for loss. They both had 13 and a half plus sacks. Of course, Merlin Olsen had one more than Aaron Donald, actually. Um, it's pretty crazy. Julius Peppers was up in there at 12 and a half sacks, but Lawrence Taylor... Led the league in sacks with 21 and a half. 20 and a half for Khalil Mack, who is right on his tail. I'm sure, that was a fun sack race. Derek Thomas had 15. There was Merlin Olsen. Ricky Jackson had 13 and a half. Julius Peppers in there. Any other pass rushers? Yep, of course. Mario Williams had nine sacks. Good for him. Junior Seau had six and a half as a middle linebacker. That's crazy. Interceptions. Neon Dion, prime time. Eight interceptions for him. What are his numbers looking like? 99 speed, 99 man, 98 zone, 99 play rack. He is a pretty good player. We're number 19 at cornerback. That's so gross. Nickel Roby Coleman right on his tail. Rondé Barber had five. Cody Davis? Who the? Who is Cody Davis? I'm also not clicking X. I don't know why that's doing that. Um, maybe my controller is, uh, is a little screwy. But um, who else is in here? No, we don't. How many defensive backs do we do? Asante Samuel is in here? It's not even so much about interceptions with them. It's about like pass deflections and like catches allowed or whatever. I don't even know here. Junior say I was just all over the place. How many touchdowns did Deion Sanders have? Tell me at least a couple. Led the league in defensive touchdowns with two. That is very, very cool. Love to see that. So this is actually a downloadable roster. I'm going to uh, give a big shout out to Eagles TD for making this. This was a really fun video to record. It's like fun to see 
kind of these historic rosters, even though this isn't a historic roster, but it's using historic players. If that makes sense, you guys follow that. Um, so if you check it out in the Madden Share, you can down, go to Download Community Files, and you can find it as um, one former play by Eagles TD underscore on PS4. And of course, I have my file up here. Uh, I'm trying to upload this or update this a little bit more for the 2020 NFL Draft. They've gotten a little bit busy, as you guys are, I'm sure, fully aware. But um, 161,000 downloads almost. That's pretty amazing. So thank you guys so much for the support on that. I hope you've enjoyed the file. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already. And I will see you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Are you the queen? So give me the best. Always the best. We'll fake it.